it's almost time for back to school and I want to take you, I want to continue our greatest hits, even though our back to school month is ended back in July. What I want to focus on for our greatest hits is school security. But as for COVID, nothing new has happened. Vaccinations are up. Nothing new for the, probably nothing new for the schools because we had technical difficulties. But uh, we'll keep you posted on, we'll keep, we'll keep you more COVID as it, as it probably happens. But uh, I want to still focus in on safety because after Uvalde, school districts and the governor responded by the governor responded by 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 having weekly inspections. So here's what the here's an example from the CCISD police chief. The Corpus Christi Independent School District wants to let parents know they are prepared to keep students safe as they head back to the classroom tomorrow. District Police Chief Kirby Warnke says the governor gave an extensive checklist of things he wanted school districts to do before the first day of classes. He says today he was happy to report to the school board that the list was completed. One of the most important ones is a physical check of every single exterior lock in CCISD, which is a tall order because we have quite a few. Or he says work orders were placed for locks that had any issues and the district will be checking every exterior lock weekly. He says they also did partial school safety audits and planned all of the safety drills for the school year. But there was one person that had a, that had a problem with it. That, that probably had an issue with it as John LaGoya of the school meeting. Now remember... If you watch the show, you may recognize he was the one to complain about the homework. About the homework. So uh, let's take a look at this. Take a look at this clip. Imagine yourself on the iron throne. Because school security is taken, taken like very seriously here. And if we don't take school security very seriously, we don't know what we're going to end up with. Take a look. SD Police Chief Chief Kirby Warnke telling school board members the district is compliant with safety requirements set forth by the state following the tragedy in Uvalde. However, board member John Longoria tonight brought up a concern during the meeting, telling Warnke as he drove past a local elementary school that he noticed one of the self-closing gates was propped open as employees were going in and out. He says while no students were on campus, it is a cautionary reminder that it will take a full effort of employees to grasp the concept that is a safety issue. From the doors of the past, especially in schools, uh, there, there's just no room for human error. Following a recent safety policy approval by the board that forces all doors, including classroom doors, to remain closed and locked during the school day, Warnke told school leaders that if caught, an employee or a teacher not following that policy can now face disciplinary action. Well, that kind of sums it up. If a teacher does not follow it, so disciplinary action. It's like this. You didn't follow a safety policy? Get out. You're you're done. I'm not throwing you under the bus. All I'm saying is like how it how it would have happened, how it could happen. Because school security is taken, is taken very seriously. Very seriously. School security and safety is taken very seriously. And speaking of the camera, and speaking of safety. Let's take a look at one of the clips that I'm going to play for you throughout Let's just take a look at one of the clips I'm going to play for you. I do have like a lot of... There is one with the camera issue. Let's see if I can find it. Actually, I guess let me give you my take. Just this is small, just a little portion of the take. I'm going to tell you the end of the broadcast. Let me just tell you. 
School safety is the number one priority when kids go back to school. When kids go to school, the parents, all what the parents care about is safety. It's a big safety issue. We cannot be allowing kids to leave campus just to go get McDonald's, Whataburger, Subway, pizza, Long John Silver's, whatever. A good number of the students are not conscious of the fact there are cameras throughout the building and that they're constantly watching them for safety purposes. That's the whole point. Safety is the number one priority in every school district, period. It doesn't matter whether you like it or don't like it. If you like it, that's good. Safety is number one. I keep telling you this for five years and nobody cares. No one gives a crap, no one gives a damn, and nobody cares because not every kid cares. And if kids don't care, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't so it doesn't matter whether you're uh, you're with it or against it if you're with it then okay as a parent you should be concerned about your child's safety when they go to school okay you gotta take a little break here when we come back more about school safety then updates from Oxford and Uvalde as we continue our school safety later on Summer break. Lifeguards behaving badly. Coming up. As we start to end, as, school, as the school year begins, let's start to focus in on those school zones. I see people, I see people almost all the time speeding in a school zone when the sign says school. Speed limit, 20. You're not supposed to speed in a school zone. That's why these are created for a reason to help to be safe for everyone. But uh, not one person cares because they're in a hurry. It's like the speedway is going on. Does that scare you? If that doesn't scare you, that's like someone getting ready to ride a motorcycle at your Grand Canyon. Does it you? Does it scare you? Nah. Oh, hell no. Boom, boom. That tells me you don't care. This is ridiculous. If you keep speeding, you're gonna have you're gonna be paying tickets, paying fines. I mean, you look up speeding in a school zone. Which I'm gonna do right now. Speeding in school zone ticket. It's ten dollars per mile over the speed limit. 20 if you're over the school zone. You also have to pay court costs. But if you're going over 94 miles per hour, you'll have to call the court to find out how much you owe. And what's the fine? $20 per mile with the speed limit, court cost, that's $107.10. The fine is $20 per mile. 10 miles, same thing over almost $200. That was back in 2015. In Houston, that's in Houston, like $194, $204. San Antonio, speed limit, the total fine, that's $5 to pay. Dallas, Austin, the total is like 307. We don't know anything about Corpus. And this is a one page. This is a one page fees to talk about this. What happens if you get a school speeding zone tip ticket? If you avoid this, there's no reason there's no rocket science for in schools. All you need to get you're going to go to school zone speed limits, your area or state. Once you find these figures, memorize them, make sure you follow them religiously. These, these speed limits are to protect children and people on foot in school zones. Take extra precautions during certain weather conditions such as rain, snowfall, and fog. It can make you harder to see ahead. Therefore, you must drive slow and avoid any accidents. In addition to that, you may want to always try to stay vigilant around pedestrians, cyclists, crossing guards, children roaming around, and even stop school buses. Do this day in, day out, and you will be golden. According to the ticket void. If you want to fight this, you got unlucky. 
Well, in this case, just follow the steps like note down location, note down the speed, contact the school and the location to find out if the school was in session at the time you received the ticket. Look out for school zone markers where they're greatly marked. Was there a tree, bush? Last but not least, you can hire a lawyer with experience in traffic ticket dismissal cases. That's only if you want to do that, but don't don't fight with don't fight with them. If you're issued a ticket, you're issued a ticket, but you gotta pay for it. Here's John Thompson to tell us. John? And don't forget, back to school also means some changes to your daily drive. That means always be on the lookout when you're in school zones. Year-round districts such as London and Teloso Midway started their school zones last month. The first day for school in the CCISD is tomorrow. We keep reminding you of that just in case you're hitting the snooze button. That means slow down and look out for anyone who may be crossing the street. That's right. Let's go back to safety. Let's go back to our safety plans. I'm so glad we're finally on vacation! Yikes. For a lot of families, kids. Well, this was a really big day for a lot of families. Kids have started to head back to school. Several school districts started classes today, including Aleph ISD, New Caney ISD, and Livingston ISD. And also part of our back to school coverage tonight, we're talking about school safety. We're seeing more and more school districts working with local law enforcement agencies to improve security on their campuses. KPRC 2's Kathy Hernandez is live in the newsroom right now with a closer look at one of those partnerships. Kathy? Good evening. Precinct 4 up in North Harris County is teaming with six local districts to make sure every school is protected. It'll help protect the kids and and kind of ease the parents a little bit. A lot more needs to be done. Safety is top of mind for families of children heading back to school. Harris County Precinct 4 Constable Mark Herman is reassuring parents they're ready. We're gonna just make sure that, that uh, the kids out here are protected. Uh, in North Harris County, the best we can get them protected. Precinct 4 is teaming with police departments from six school districts, including Spring, Tomball, Klein, Cy Fair, Umble, and Aldean ISD. Constable Herman says he's dedicated hundreds of his deputy constables to schools throughout the year. We will literally uh, have uh, deputy constables with our ISDs walking schools. We will be at schools. They may need us to work traffic enforcement. Herman and the police chiefs met last week to lay out their strategic plan, including law enforcement response in case of an active shooter situation. Whether these folks show up or their folks and my folks or the sheriff's folks, the main objective is to neutralize that threat, period. One mother says we all need to work together to ensure students are safe. It can't just be the police department. It has to be a community effort and the Congress people that we put in place to help with situations like this. And the constable says they're also adding additional deputy constables to private schools and daycares within Precinct 4. Reporting live in the newsroom, Kathy Hernandez, KPRC 2 News. And school safety is important. All right, do you ever trust lifeguards? The ones who are hot and buff and they're red, red like on Baywatch? What do you know when they're really smoking? Coming up, when we come back. Rena Knight looks into those lifeguards, including a lifeguard who is sharing, who is blowing the whistle on things that you don't want to know. Really, you just don't want to know what the lifeguards are doing, whether they're smoking, whether they're just out in the core and off duty. You're also going to meet, a, meet someone who knows about the lifeguards, but secretly records them on camera. Don't go away. I want to follow you up on a story we're still following. Two stories we're still following. Let's go to Uvalde. Here's the latest from Uvalde. Cor 
End of the summer break is right around the corner, but the thought of returning to school again is especially hard in the Uvalde community. Just over two months ago, 19 little students and two teachers were murdered inside Robb Elementary School there. And so the district is preparing to welcome students back and hoping to ease some of those concerns. The school board is now holding a meeting tonight to talk about improving the safety and security of campuses, as well as how it's preparing to handle the emotional needs of staff and students. In response to the tragedy, the district has also announced two new positions, one called a director of recovery, the other the director of special projects, which will oversee trauma care counselors as well as improvements in safety and security. Tonight's meeting is open to the public there in Uvalde. Uh, teachers can return to school there uh, as of tomorrow. Meantime, the principal of Robb Elementary has accepted a new position. Mandy Gutierrez will now be the assistant director of special education at the Uvalde School District. The uh, district informing parents of the news in an email late Friday. Christy Perez, the former assistant principal of Uvalde High School, will serve as the new principal now at Robb Elementary. That's the start of this year. Now, what about Oxford? Well, just hours ago, there is now new evidence that caused an outrage in the Oxford community. Over the weekend, school board president Tom Donnelly added fuel to the fire by criticizing parents of shooting victims, saying they are trying to fight the community in his words by taking events during the shooting out of context and going public. The parents watched the surveillance video last week showing them in the uncle in the prosecutor's office. They responded to they responded they saw what they saw, facts are facts, and board president has not watched that video. Four students were killed, seven others including a teacher, during the shooting on November 30th. The new evidence just came out after a civil lawsuit was filed by parents. They want to include the armed school security guard. They say that the security guard could have prevented the death of one student, Justin Schilling. The father spoke out in a news conference saying, it's just so difficult that he could just still be there if somebody did the job. That somebody could, be the, could have been the security guard. Parents say the guard has been looking at Tate Marie on the floor in the hallway bleeding. The guard thought it was just a drill and the blood was just makeup. Inside and, and even the bathroom. That's where the security guard was in the, in the boy's bathroom. Pulls her gun, went to the boy's bathroom, there were the alleged shooter, Ethan Crumley, Justin Schilling, and Keegan Gregory, who was able to run out. The mother, Megan, watched the video, and her son tells Action News today, and you just want to see it, and see what I see? It's insulting. I watched the videos. Facts are facts. In an email, the school president said in part, that's why isolating sick woman in this video, out of context, does a disservice to our staff members and the entire community. We would not let that happen, nor we will allow these actions to distract us from our mission promoting healing and providing a world-class education to our children. And now there's going to be an Oxford school room meeting that's going to happen tomorrow night, 6.30, at the Reform Arts High School. The judge in the civil suit will take the issue adding the, adding the school security guard in the lawsuit hearing on Wednesday, and we'll bring you the latest. In that full statement, safety concerns will still be a part of already, and I'm so proud of numerous safety updates and security measures we are taking to ensure a safe return to school. We'll highlight these measures as our Town Hall and Open House. When we come back, lifeguards at risk, meaning high on drugs. We'll, we'll show you, we'll show you some instances of what happened when lifeguards are not on duty. And you also meet a person who secretly records them and gives us the rules of lifeguards. We're going to tell you what those rules are when we return. Don't go away. Did you have a good summer? I hope you did at the pool or at the beach. But what about those lifeguards, those men and women perched above the pool? And we appreciate them. No doubt about it. Tonight, we're going to take you... Tonight you're going to meet someone who is blowing his whistle about the confessions that no lifeguard wants to know. You'll also meet someone who secretly records lifeguards as part of his job. But the question is, what are some of them really smoking? 
What are they really doing? Here's Reena Nade. It's the 4th of July, and with the sun finally shining and temperatures sizzling, it's time to hit the water. And these are the young men and women charged with protecting our lives while we swim. One, two, three, four. Lifeguards, buff, busty, and brave, ready to jump in at the first sign of danger. Right? <laughs> well, maybe not always. Sure, they may look hot in their signature red bathing suits, ripped abs, and tan torsos like on Baywatch. But what do we really know about the dudes and dolls behind the shades? It's the start of swimming season, and you're outing secrets that people don't want to know. Meet 23-year-old Harris, a former lifeguard at several pools in Texas. Tonight, he's blowing his whistle on the secret practices that he says sometimes occur high atop the lifeguard stand. And we do mean high. Are lifeguards using drugs? Yes. There were a couple of lifeguards who smoke weed before coming into work or they would be um, still rolling from the night before. That's something many lifeguards confess to us. And according to Harris, at one pool, not only were lifeguards coming in hungover, they would blaze up right on the job. They check chemicals. Checking chemicals, it's a code word. Yes. Normally when you check chemicals, it's to check the pH, but what they were doing is they were going back and smoking weed. There are kids whose lives are potentially in your hands and they're getting high. Yes, it's very irresponsible. It's doubly troubling, Harris says, because actually checking the chemicals is really important to keep the pool sanitary. As they say, what happens in the pool stays in the pool. If you're going to the pool, don't go at the end of the day. Because it's full of urine and it's really quite nasty. Ugh, how do you know that? Um, you can tell by the color. At the start of the day, it's really, really a pretty blue. At the end of the day, it's, it's more yellow. Ick factor aside, discolored water can pose a more hidden health hazard. It makes it harder for lifeguards to see people. Take the tragic case of mom, Marie Joseph. Look at this security video. That's Marie coming down the slide. Her head bobs above the water for a moment before she sinks to the bottom of the pool. Multiple lifeguards were on duty, including this one directly in front of her. I just don't see how they miss it. Somebody wasn't doing their job. But the water was so murky, none of them noticed her submerged body. See here as the pool went from blue to dark green. An investigation later revealed that a pool manager held off on chlorinating the water to reduce costs. Water is really strange. Either you're having fun or you're dying. Roughly 4,000 Americans drown each year. And one in five children who drown in swimming pools do so with a lifeguard present. Surveillance cameras caught this 15-year-old drowning after going down this water slide. The teen was underwater for more than five minutes. Where was the lifeguard? According to the family's attorney, busy at the basketball court. Where's the pool? And there's a young boy who is lost consciousness. By the time someone finally noticed the kid at the bottom of the pool, it was too late. Shockingly, no guard was disciplined. It's silent, it's quiet, and it's sudden. Kathleen Puchinski's four-year-old son drowned at this ritzy country club pool. Let's just say my son was found 10 feet from an empty lifeguard chair. Is there anything else that I really need to say? She believes too few lifeguards are trained properly. So I've talked to hundreds of guards, literally, and I asked this question, how many of you feel like you would recognize a swimmer in trouble immediately? Not one hand has ever been raised. Never, not one. A lot of lifeguards are not prepared for something really bad happening. And here's the thing. It's actually quite challenging to spot a kid drowning, as I found out for myself with a test dummy named Timmy. I've got my underwater camera on. They're going to hide the mannequin Timmy somewhere in the pool. I've got to find it. How hard can this really be? Timmy is right at the edge of the pool, just feet in front of me a spot where many young kids called wall huggers drown. I scan the pool over and over again and can't find him. This mannequin was not in my line of sight at all. I can tell you, I never saw it, never was. Getting ready to start an aquatic facility operational audit. Meet Rat Carroll. He's no ordinary water park guest, but rather an undercover boss, the head of Ellison Associates, 
a lifeguard training company. Today, he's here at an indoor water park in Pennsylvania, playing a game of cat and mouse with his trainees, armed with a video camera to secretly see who's paying attention. We want to be able to see a guest in distress within 10 seconds so that we're not being reacted to a situation where somebody may already be on the bottom. Carol does this regularly because, frankly, there were endless examples of lifeguards behaving badly, all caught on tape. Look at this lifeguard totally tuning out the pool, listening to his iPod. No lifeguard should ever be provided any electronic equipment, certainly no texting or talking on the phone. This guy seems to have something else on his mind besides safety. He's looking everywhere but at the swimmers. Is he checking out that woman's behind? Worst of all may be this guard. He's gone into full hibernation mode. Fortunately, no one is swimming. Let's hope he returns from La La Land before some kid cannonballs into the deep end. But secretly surveilling the guards is only step one. How realistic of a simulation is this dumb drill? It's as realistic as it gets. It, it's a situation where we have a crowded pool, where lifeguards are focused on their zones and scanning their water. It's the only real-time evaluation of a lifeguard on the stand. With Carol's supervision, we conducted one of our own drills with our trusty mannequin, Timmy. Would these unsuspecting lifeguards be able to spot him with our hidden cameras rolling? Watch as one of our producers sneaks Timmy in the pool. In less than five seconds, the lifeguard Blake, 18, sees something, blows his whistle, and jumps in. Did you think it was a real kid drowning? Honestly, like, I'm just scanning the waters, and if I see something that's, like, not out of the norm, like, I go in and check it out, no matter if it's, like, a garbage bag to a kid, you know? Doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah, you were pretty quick, less than five seconds. We're not just, like, people who just can, you know, big macho people with their shirts off. We actually, like, we're saving people's lives. Ellis lifeguards have become superb at the drills. The average response time is three seconds. But Harris warns that's no reason for parents to mistake the pool for daycare. Parents will drop their kids off at the pool and they don't have any supervision except for the lifeguards. So parents think you're just a cheap babysitting service? I guess so. And not only do kids need to be monitored constantly, Rack Carroll says so do the guards. But isn't it uncomfortable to have to go to the lifeguard or the manager and say, sorry, I don't think he's scanning the pool. It may be uncomfortable, but it's a whole lot more comfortable than dealing with your child being on the bottom of the pool. Very, very uncomfortable. And it's so uncomfortable about school threats. Going back to our, going back to our greatest hits, ever since Oxford, TikTok has done a challenge to where National School Shooting Day, you know, where you can post school shooting threats and put the school on lockdown. But ever since the first day of school, or during the summer, has there been any more school threats? We'll tell you when we come back. It's back to school. Our greatest hints continues with the question, has there been any more school threats? The answer is yes. Just 11 hours ago, Marinara police arrested juvenile for threats on the first day of class. On the first day of school. Let's find out. In Arizona, a juvenile has been arrested by Marinara police after a threat between social media. They responded Monday morning, August 8th, after the threat was received by social media, claiming the school was going to be blown up. The MPD said they immediately located the source of the threat and arrested the juvenile. He was charged with one count of threats of intimidation. Said a suspect lives man lives in another state and was visiting family in Marina. No specific location was identified in the threat. This, and the police department says, regardless of the time the social media plans were, were comments being made, it's important to know these threats will be taken seriously and followed up immediately, according to the police department. And just 10 hours ago, there was another threat. Police investigate school threats in a severe Vista Marina Monday. That's the same threat. Three days ago, Colorado campuses are not the only schools targeting potential threats. Louisiana, all in Louisiana and in Beaumont, Texas. July 27th, 13 colleges were evacuated across the state. In July 24th, four to five bomb threats were made to schools in Indiana. And it's still an investigation. 
And six days ago, there were five of the biggest threats that the conversation.com indicated. Trauma among students, worse well-being for teachers and students, staff shortages of turnover, threat of closure, th and threats from the community. That's the reason why all these threats happen because these are these five reasons. Teachers are, and that's the reason why teachers are leaving because of all these because of all these threats. They left because of COVID. Now they're going to leave because of, because of threats. You know what this means? It means you're going to have like not a lot of teachers left. I know teachers are going to be here and hearing me like, Threats? Oh no, I quit. I'm not saying that. These are what from the different states. These are what the different states. And three, three hours ago, investigators say a fake account linked to Kershaw County School threat. That was a fake account. After investigating this, officials have determined that an account making the threats is a fake account does not belong to the goof Ellen to the to the high school student. Eleven hours ago, NWCU UNC gave the all clear to Bonfoot support in the nursing schools. I mean more threats are happening. Last month the Tango Florida kid, Daniel Marquez was prep walk for school shooting threat and pleads not guilty. He literally texted a friend saying he had scans one of a large sum of money and posted a stock image of guns alongside the post. His father's lawyers have criticized, criticized the sheriff's office for publicizing the for publicizing the bust and claim these messages were misinterpreted. The boy's advocate, Lena came on the foundation against intolerance and racism, maintaining the position of money's appearance. That's the update from threats. That's all the schools we can threats we can find. Don't threaten people. Don't threaten schools on your first day. It just ain't right. It's not right. This week is our season is our finale week. Our season five finale. All this week is finale week. We may catch up on some topics. And tomorrow is gonna be the fur tomorrow's the first day of CCISD school of CCISD. Wednesday for Fire Bluff. And what you need to know for back to school, so this week is our finale week, which means what you need to know for back to school, which was already ended. But uh, we'll keep you posted on some issues from Uvalde to Oxford, and being the very latest, like what's going to happen on Tuesday night. Tuesday night's going to be the board meeting, and we'll, keep you, and, we'll, and we'll have that for you on Wednesday. So for now, that's Give Me a Break for this Monday. We will see you again if you Give Me a Break Wednesday. After all of us here, Give Me a Break and YouTube. Good night, everyone.